how's it going folks bit of an update on the aquaculture setup behind me here um, the last one I did was when the foil was wrapped around the filters just to combat a bit of an algal issue we had but I'll talk about that in a minute uh, to begin with pH pH has been pretty steady today it's at 6.6 .6. I've managed to keep it uh, between uh, mid sixes and up to around about seven just using that shell grip bag uh, what I think is happening is the fine little particles in the bag are uh, being broken down by the acid or the acidity of the water and they're helping to keep the pH uh, nice and high. I have found though uh, after about three to four weeks the pH does tend to fall a little bit. What I think is happening there is the small finer particles of the shell grit is being, are being broken down by the acidity of the water releasing the carbonates and keeping the pH high. After all those finer small particles are being broken down by the slightly acidic water, the, it's, it's not really reacting as well and not keeping the pH up. What I've been doing every three to four weeks is taking that bag of shell grit, emptying it out into the chicken pen. They have a bit of a peck at it and it helps build up the calcium levels in their scratchings. Um, and then what I do is add in some new uh, fresh shell grit into the bag, put it back under the flow of the water and the pH then jumps pretty much all back up to 6.8, 6.9 and I'm happy as Larry and so are the fish. Um, so that's pretty much all how I've been balancing the pH. I could go into metered doses using the calcium hydroxide, but for now I'm pretty happy with that shell grit. I might look into it once the bag is empty, but I think that bag will probably see out the life of the system, just with the small handful I'm using. So happy with the pH. Nutrient levels, nutrient levels, pretty stoked with them as well. I did a bit of a test earlier on this morning, uh, just after the fish were fed for the first time. Uh, the ammonia came in at, um, I'd say around about 0.25 parts per million. The nitrites at trace and the nitrates at about 10 parts per million. So the reason I think the nitrate level is so low in the system is I had to flush through around about 300 litres of water through the trickle filter after we added the UV light filter um, just to collect all that algae that had settled in the system and just flush it out. Looking at the ammonia and the nitrite level though, I mean I'm, I'm stoked with that basically means that the system cycled and we shouldn't have any more problems with spiking in the ammonia or the nitrite as long as everything runs smoothly. So now a uh, little bit of a look at the system. Uh, what we might do is actually feed the fish. Um, just the jade perch, the silvers I, I fed before I filmed. Um, yeah sorry about that. So we'll just go around and feed the jades. So as you can see these guys get a little bit camera shy. They'll probably come up for a bit of a feed in a tick. It's always the way. Yeah, they've just realized there's food there and now they're going to come up. So these guys didn't want to come up and hit the stuff on the surface. They're just collecting the pellets that are sinking slowly. So, sorry, it's not that spectacular, folks, but, you know, a bit hard to train these guys to jump through hoops. So I mentioned before we had a bit of an issue with algae in the water. Basically, what happened was I think the light was coming through these filters, hence why they were wrapped in the foil. Having the lid slightly open also encourages algae growth, but it's something we like to do, mainly because the fish uh, we find tend to get used to us walking around the system a bit more, and they don't get um, spooked as easily as they normally would. Uh, something we learnt with the other aquaponic system, having the lid down all the time and opening the lid up, used to hear fish fly all over the tank and bump into walls, so this is sort of embarrassing. I deleted all the vision I took of the uh, fish tanks when they were fully choked out with the algae. All I've got is just this little clip of what the water was like when I um, emptied out the trickle filter a week or two ago. So sorry about that guys, you're just going to have to take my word for it, but yeah, it definitely was pea soup in these tanks. This little UV clarifier only runs at 40 watts, so it's not a, a very expensive unit to run, and it's not running all the time either. I'm only going to run it pretty much well when need be. Um, I had it on for three days to look after the problem, um, and I've only had it on probably for about six hours since, so it's not something I will be running all the time. Um, also too, a couple of people mentioned or suggested that it could cause a problem with the bacteria in the system. Uh, the UV light basically killing the, the good bacteria that we need to process the ammonia and the nitrite. Um, it's not really an issue at all. As long as it's not directly in the biofilter, shouldn't be a problem whatsoever from what I can tell. As you can see, it's just hooked in there from a line that comes, um, that would normally run through the side of the tank there and deliver water. I've just added a little extra length of hose, water comes in the side of the filter there, runs up the length of a UV light and it runs out then through a little venturi just into the fish tank there. 
This side here is a little port. Um, I've actually turned it on at the moment just to give you a bit of a look. Um, you can see a faint glow of the blue light just at the end. UV light's not good to look at directly, but this is a bit of a reflection just off um, the end of the bulb up the end there. Just let you know that the light's working and yeah, happy days, everything's going fine. So another method I used to try and remove the suspended algae from the system was a 200 micron uh, filter sock. I just had it hanging um, basically under the outlet that would normally let water run through the um, shell grit. And it, while it did a great job of collecting the algae, it just wasn't good enough and that's why I went with the UV filter. Um, I was cleaning that sock out twice a day and it just didn't make a dent in the amount of algae in the water. So just thought I'd show you that. So the other issue I had was the little red pump. It still works, it still pumps water, but the volume just steadily decreased. I noticed a real decrease in the level, water level in the tanks. Uh, the moving bed biomedia stopped swirling around in the filter. I took it off and put on this little seven and a half thousand um, litre unit unit it draws a lot more it's 170 watt but it's doing the same job if not slightly better than this 10,000 hour uh, 10,000 sorry liter an hour job so for now I'm happy with this pump um, I may change it in the future but as you can hear it's very quiet I've had to um, silence the venturi over your head at the moment but it is running very quietly and it's doing the job. Uh, the tap on the moving bed biofilter, as you can see there, is only on about three quarters and I'm getting the same movement as I did with this pump when it was on um, open throttle. So more than happy. Just have a quick look at the silvers here. Turn the water off to make them easier to see. They're all huddled down below the slow there. As you can see, I've got it on a bit of an angle. Um, it's just going down to the far side. That's where the solids are collecting. That's probably about uh, three weeks worth of uneaten food. The hope was to have it on the angle. It would pick up more of the uneaten food and take it out. I basically think I'm overfeeding these guys. They're not growing as fast as the jade perch, but that's just the, um, the type of fish they are. Some of them, oh, a bit blurry there, some of them, um, well actually two of them are rather large, uh, about the same size as the smallest jades. Um, some of them are still rather tiny, so I haven't taken the mesh from the bottom of the slow yet, mainly because I don't want those one or two small ones to get sucked out. Um, so what I think is going to happen, as soon as I take that mesh off or that netting off, it's going to free up the movement of the water and a lot more of the solids will be sucked through and out. So anyway, there's a, there's a bit of a look. I mean, I can stir them up a bit we'll move this pipe and see if they there we go so they are still there in number yeah but they just like hiding underneath that pipe for whatever reason so there we go we'll leave them alone and turn the water back on hey i've also bought some azola and duckweed this is the azola it's an australian water fern uh, it's growing fantastically all those green bits you can see are actually uh, new bits of growth um, i bought it from a local place here in australia so Fair Dinkum Seeds, they have a bit of an online store. I bought two lots of this and they threw in duckweed as well. Uh, duckweed really isn't an issue for us because we have some neighbours that can give it to us, but I thought I'd set up my own barrel as well. And um, yeah, this stuff here will be going to the silver perch and also the jade perch will eat this. But the Azola, I've been told, this stuff here, nah, no fish will eat it, but I'm fairly sure I fed some of this to the jade perch previously. Um, when we decommissioned a little barrel, pond barrel down the back, it had some of this growing on top. And from memory, the jade perch snapped it up. So I'm, I'm fairly sure the jade perch will eat it. If not, hey, the chickens will eat it and I'll, I'll have a crack at it too, see what it tastes like. But the main idea of having this is possibly in the future setting up a bit of a um, flow through system, different sorts of beds, not barrels like this, just to try and remove some of the nutrients from the system, a bit of a biofilter, basically turning it into aquaponics and not a fish farm, but yeah. Um, the, the weed that grows in there will be used to either feed back to the fish or to the chickens. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. Um, might as well have a crack at it, see how it goes. I know the chickens love it. Just quickly before I go, just wanted to show you this. What we have here is a power lead that was left on overnight in the rain and has burned out, as you can see from the um, right hand side there. What it did was it tripped the switch that feeds all my fishy stuff. Uh, that power point there um, is on the same circuit. So I basically lost all my air and all my water flow into these two fish tanks. The backup system in there uh, for the aquaponic system, it kicked on fine, not a problem with that whatsoever. Um, those fish were happy. But in here, these guys had no air and no water circulation for about 15-20 minutes until I could um, 
work out what was going on. So luckily it didn't happen last night because the rain actually occurred early last night and yesterday afternoon. Um, I just missed this. I thought I'd unplugged it and I hadn't. So basically it's showing that my laziness uh, or just being slack and not setting up a backup in these systems, I could have lost these fish last night. What I intend to do is, I've got two of these, I bought them from Western Aquaponics, thanks Craig, link in the description. Um, these guys are going to be in the sump tank, one will be running into each fish tank and then it'll just be flowing via gravity uh, back through the system, the radial flow, then the moving bed bio into the sump just to keep going around. It'll be hooked up to a couple of um, car batteries. The moving bed biofilter won't have any movement, but you know, such is. So I will do a clip on this and explain what I'm doing when it happens, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you. It pays to have your backups in. Um, like I said, if it happened last night, I, you know, could have come out to fish emulsion, basically dead fish in a lot of water. So just a bit of a cautionary tale there. So there you go, there's a bit of a look at how the fish farm's going at the moment. Must say, I'm mighty chuffed with those jade perch. They've put on a lot of size. Uh, you saw how big they are compared with when we first got them. Um, doing fantastically, really hitting the feed well. Two or three times a day they're getting a good feed and they're finishing it all. Never any scraps left on the bottom of their tank. Silver perch, on the other hand, I'm finding are a little bit fiddly. Um, not too sure as to why. This is the first time I've had the silver perch. Uh, to begin with, they were coming up um, halfway in the water column or halfway up the tank expecting the feed and, and really hitting it well. Last week or so they've gone off it. I don't know if it's because it's the way, if it's the way I'm changed how I'm feeding them. Um, I was feeding them the cracked pellets before. Uh, now I'm giving them a mix of cracked pellets, um, some one mil for the larger ones and also some, um, what do they call it, crumble. Um, some crumble I bought at a local pro local produce. It's from a fresh bag, so I know it's not bad. Uh, it's not off. It smells fine. So, yeah, they're, they're just being a little bit fussy at the moment. No drama, though, because they're all pretty much all going to be fished out soon and put into the aquaponics set up behind me there. And I'll be separating the jade perch and splitting them between the two tanks here. So, um, don't hold your breath. Hopefully it'll happen soon. We'll just wait and see. So that's pretty much all it. The wind started to pick up a bit, so I'll pretty much will sign off. Just quickly, any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you in a timely manner, or I'll, I'll try to anyway. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. I've been posting a fair few photos to Instagram, which post then to Facebook, so suss it out if you want to see other little updates around the yard, harvestings and things like that. Um, yeah, but pretty much all, that's it. Cheers guys, and have a fantastic one. Catch ya. Howdy folks. Just a little bit of an update on the hairy eyebrows. I know, don't want to look like a mentat.